For centuries, humans have been obsessed with time travel. It can be found in stories, myths, and scientific theories from all over the world. Time is a fundamental part of our existence. We all experience time in our own unique way, and it shapes our lives in profound ways. We are constantly aware of the passage of time, and we often wonder about the past and the future. Time travel offers us the tantalizing possibility of exploring these different time periods and of changing our own destinies. Have you ever wanted to time travel? Turns out that you're probably already doing it without realizing. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and in this video we're talking about time dilation. So let's begin. Time dilation is a phenomenon in which time passes at different rates for different observers. It's a natural consequence of Einstein's theory of relativity. But there are actually two ways that time can be dilated. In 1905, Albert Einstein published his paper on the electrodynamics of moving bodies, introducing the special theory of relativity. His theory was based on two rules. Firstly, that the rules of physics are the same for all observers in uniform motion. And secondly, the speed of light in a vacuum is the same for all observers, regardless of the motion of the light source or observer. This led to a revolutionary concept in time dilation, but also length contraction, which is less often talked about, but I won't have the time to go into in this video. But in essence, with length contraction, you could fit an entire Ariane 5 rocket into your bedroom if you wanted to. Back to time dilation. The idea is that time will pass at different rates for observers in different frames of reference. This means that if two observers are moving relative to each other, they will measure the passage of time differently. So for example, let's imagine that you have a cat in a rocket. On this rocket, you have a light clock, which consists of two mirrors, where a flash of light is emitted from one mirror towards the other mirror, and then reflected back to the source mirror. The time it takes for the light to complete one round trip is measured as a tick of the clock. We know that distance equals speed times time, so the distance traveled is c times t, where c is the speed of light in a vacuum, and t is the time it takes to hit the mirror. Now, let's say that the rocket is moving relative to a stationary observer here on Earth. In the observer's reference frame, the distance they see the light has traveled is not the same as the distance the cat on the rocket sees. The distance seen by the observer is larger than the distance seen by the cat. But since special relativity says that the speed of light is the same for all observers, we know that the distance traveled must be c times t prime, where t prime is longer than t, i.e. time passes more slowly for the cat on the fast-moving rocket. But exactly how fast? Well, let's calculate it. We know the distance traveled by the rocket is the velocity of the rocket times t prime. This gives us a triangle of distances. Using Pythagoras' theorem for triangles, we can write the following. And with a bit of rearranging, you'll get this. Congratulations, we've just derived Einstein's time dilation equation. This equation basically tells you that the faster you move, the slower your time will be. For example, let's say your rocket is traveling at 0.9 times the speed of light. Then when you plug in these numbers, you'll find that time passed by a stationary observer is more than twice the time of the traveler. What's really fun is when you travel at the speed of light, then your t prime becomes infinite times of t. In other words, time stops altogether. Now, special relativity deals with the behavior of objects in the absence of gravitational forces. And it wasn't until a decade later that he was able to refine the theory to incorporate gravity. The new theory was completely consistent with special relativity, so it still gives rise to time dilation dependent on the relative motion of different observers. But additionally, there's a second time dilation. The second phenomena occurs due to gravitational influence on different observers. The time dilation equation due to the effects of gravity is a bit more complex to derive. 
If you're really curious, it is possible to do it with t equals distance over speed and plugging in the Schwarzschild metric, which is a equation that describes the geometry of space-time around a spherically symmetric mass. But it's too much for this video, so I'll just leave you with the final equation. Here, g is the gravitational constant, m is the mass of the object causing the gravitational field, r is the distance from the center of that gravitational field, and c, again, is the speed of light in a vacuum. t prime is the time measured by the cat in the gravitational field, and t is the time measured by an observer who is really, really far away from all these effects of gravity. It looks not too different to the time dilation in special relativity equation, don't you think? So you can see here that the bigger the mass, and hence also the bigger the gravity, the time will pass slower. What this means is that let's say you have identical twins. One lives on top of a skyscraper and the other lives on the ground floor where the gravity of Earth is stronger because you're closer to the center of the Earth. Well, joke's on you, twin with the great view, because the twin on the ground floor will actually age slower. Just like in the movie Interstellar, when they go to the black hole, things that have so much mass and hence gravity that not even light can escape them when they go there for a brief moment, they come out to find so much time has passed them by. People have aged or people you know have died. Now, time dilation in GR is really interesting because according to this, black holes can exist but are impossible to form. As a neutron star starts to collapse into a black hole, time dilation will eventually kick in. And so an observer from the outside would just see it collapsing slower and slower, but never quite become a single. Marriage. Time dilation has been experimentally verified. The famous examples are we've observed muons. These are subatomic particles that have a very short lifespan. Muons that are produced in the upper atmosphere can reach the Earth's surface, even though they should have decayed long before that. They traveled so far. This is because time passes more slowly for muons because they're traveling at high speeds. GPS. GPS satellites use atomic clocks, which are very precise instruments that can be used to measure time. This ensures that the satellites can accurately determine their positions. However, the timekeeping of clocks on satellites is actually affected by both special and general relativistic effects. The clocks on the satellites run slightly slower than clocks on Earth due to special relativistic time dilation and their fast speeds but they also run slightly faster due to the general relativistic time dilation and their altitudes. If we didn't account for time dilation, slowly GPS would become inaccurate to about 10 kilometers per day. This also means that astronauts are time travelers whizzing around the Earth several times a day. Astronauts on board of the International Space Station age more slowly than here on Earth. For every six months spent on the ISS, they end up becoming approximately 0.007 seconds younger compared to someone who remained on Earth. So if you want to stay young, stay close to the ground and travel fast. Not the best way for anti-aging, but anyway, that's all for this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.